I've been using Blender for almost eight years, and yet I still continually find new tools and features that I integrate into my workflow. I figure a lot of these tools you guys probably don't know about because they are quite hidden away, so I thought I would just cover a dozen or so of my favorites in this video. Before we get started, I just want to say that I've decided to extend the promotional discount of my new course, The Essential Topology Guide. I was given 20% off for the first two weeks. I've decided just to make that pretty much indefinite. The new code is BIG20 when you cash out at Gumroad. If you haven't heard about The Essential Topology Guide before and you've seen one of my topology videos, it's basically that, only it's almost three hours long. If you'd like to pick up a copy, there will be a link in the description, but let's move on with the video. If you have lots of objects close together, like I have in this scene, it can sometimes be difficult to select the right object, especially if the objects are very small, or if you're in wireframe mode and you have lots of parallel lines running like this, and you're trying to get the specific item. Instead of just clicking until you get the right thing, what you can do is hold down Alt, and then just click in the approximate area, and it will show you a list of all of the objects that you might be trying to select, in this case if I want the camera, and to select this and now I've got the camera. If there's an option in Blender that you find yourself selecting all the time or maybe there's an option that you use occasionally and you can never quite remember where it is because it's hidden away under like various different levels of options, you might want to add that to your quick favorites. The quick favorite menu can be accessed just by pressing Q on the keyboard and you can see some of the uh, things that I've favorited over here to full screen blender when I'm recording videos like now or to clear a parent from an object. I also have this one for adding a modifier. So you can see I'm not in the modifier tab at the moment, but if I press this, I can add a subdivision surface modifier to this plate and we can see it has added in the background. You can do this really easily. Let's say you use lots of monkey heads and you're tired of going through these menus. You can just right click monkey, add to quick favorites, and now we have that option there all the time and we can add as many monkey heads as we want. Blender has a repeat last action operation, which I find really useful. Once you perform some sort of action in Blender, you can just press shift and R and it will repeat the process indefinitely. So for instance, if I duplicate this plate and then move along on the X axis, once I've confirmed this, I can press shift R and it will duplicate this last object with the same offset that I used there previously. I can do this as many times as I want. I find this a really useful way to quickly space out objects. You can also use this to make things radial. For instance, if I change this to uh, transform based on the 3D cursor, and I duplicate this and then rotate it say 40 degrees, then I can just repeat that action and I'll get a nice array that goes all the way around this plate. As you probably already know, once you perform some sort of operation in Blender, you get this little pop-up over here, which allows you to fine tune whatever you just did. Unfortunately though, if you click off, that disappears. However, you can actually access that again if you press F9. You can then go in and make those changes again at any time until you perform another operation. If you're using an external tool to do your texturing and you make changes to it after you've loaded that into Blender, Blender won't necessarily update the cache, which means you will still be using the old textures. For instance, if I give this guy a nose and I save this and then we go back into Blender, uh, no changes have appeared. So what you can do instead of closing down Blender and saving everything and then opening back up, if you're in the shader editor, you can just press Alt and R and that will reload images as you can see down there. And that's made the changes to our textures. Value input fields in Blender also have some nice quality of life um, little operations that you can perform, which are really handy and I use all of the time. One of them is the fact that you don't actually have to select an input field in order to copy and paste into it. You can actually just hover over these. So I can hover over 0 0.5, press Control and C, and then I can just hover over wherever I want to paste that value. If you want to change multiple values at once, instead of typing each one of them in individually like this, you can just select one of them and then drag down. And we can input into all of those fields at the same time. You can also perform math operations directly inside these input fields. Let's say, for example, you had quite a long number and you needed to make it multiple times bigger than that. 
um, you just type the number in what it is, and then I can type times four, let's say. And if you press enter, it'll give us a number which is four times larger than that. I can obviously do this uh, with division. I can divide that by five, and that will give us a different number. This sometimes comes in quite handy if, for instance, you're making an item and you have the diameter, but you don't have the radius. Instead of calculating what that is yourself, if it's quite a long number, that might you know, be something that you need a calculator for. Instead, you can just type it directly into here. If you're working on a complex animation in Blender or you don't have a very powerful computer, you're probably going to run into this problem when you're animating where everything runs very slowly. You can see I'm only getting about 10 frames per second here, even though it should be running at 24 frames per second. That obviously makes it very difficult to judge the speed of an animation. To get around this problem, what animators do is they create something called a play blast, which is basically just a pre-rendered, very basic version of the animation. You can do this easily in Blender just by going to view and viewport render animation. And you could say that this is rendering out at a few frames per second. And then we'll have a video version of this, which we can watch in real time and see what the animation actually looks like. Now, one thing to be aware of here when you're rendering these out, they will be saved wherever you have the render output to actually save it, which means if you run one of these after you've already rendered out some frames, you'll do what I've just accidentally done and you will overwrite the original renders. Luckily, I've already uploaded this video, so that doesn't matter. Blender 2.8 removed the old group system and it introduced collections. While collections generally are very good, sometimes you want a way to quickly uh, select items that belong to various different collections. And we can actually do that by using the old Blender group system, which still exists in a sense, it's just kind of hidden away. So for instance, I have a main collection here, which has various different items in it. I have a specific one, which is only for the cooking items, such as the cauldrons and the kettles. And I have one called plates and bowls. But what if, for whatever reason, I wanted a way to quickly be able to select only the wooden items in the scene. What I can do is I can just select all of the wooden items like this, and I can press Control and G, which will bring up this box and call this wooden items. It says create new collection, but you'll notice when I press enter, it doesn't do anything. There's no actual collection appears up here. It's kind of a hidden collection, right? So now if I select one of these wooden items and I press shift and G and select by group collection, it'll give me two different options. It gives me the plates and balls collection that it's in and this little hidden group that we just made, which is full of all of the wooden items in the scene. I find this really useful, for instance, if I have lots of items from different collections and I've put them all on a table together or on a shelf, or if you have a character and he's wearing claws and carrying weapons and they're all from different collections, it's nice just to be able to group them all together and quickly select them all at once. If you have an unusual shape at the edge of an object like this and you add in a loop cut, you'll probably notice that Blender tries to conform to the nearest edge. So you can see that as we get closer to this, it takes on the shape at the top. And then when we get near the bottom, it flips in the opposite direction and it tries to conform to the bottom edge. If you want it to go in the opposite direction, all you have to do is press E and that will flip down in the opposite way. You can alter the values on multiple objects at the same time, as long as though that value applies to all of the different objects. For instance, rather than selecting each one of these and putting them all on two levels of subdivision, which obviously is very impractical if you have hundreds of objects, all we have to do is just select all of these, hold down Alt, and then any change that we make to the selected object will apply to all of the rest of the selection as well. This doesn't just work for modifiers, this works for any value that can apply to all of the different meshes. For instance, they all have a X scale, if you hold down Alt, we can change all of the X scales at once, or the locations, or the rotations. Blender allows us to really easily transfer lots of different information from one mesh to another mesh. For instance, if I hold down Shift here and I select these three items, I can take the attributes that are 
on this cube and I can apply them to whatever I selected previously. All I need to do is hold down Control L or press Control L and you can see all the different things we can transfer or copy here. We can copy UV maps, modifiers, or what I like to use this for probably the most is linking materials. Blender also allows us to swap one object with another object entirely. I use this constantly when I'm making objects that have placeholder items. For instance, let's say I'm just blocking out a design here and I use these cylinders to figure out where I want some nuts and bolts. Well, later on, once I have the actual nut and bolt, instead of manually placing them all, all I need to do is select all of these, holding down shift and then select the final asset that I want to swap them with. Go control L, link object data, and that will now swap each one of those with a copy of this and the original meshes, the cylinders have all disappeared. The way that this works, basically it is based on the uh, origin of the object. So what I normally do is I make sure that the origin is right on the bottom. And if I just undo that, you can see the origin was also on the bottom of all of these. Leave a comment down below and let me know what your favorite hidden feature is in Blender. While you're down there, check out the link in the description where you can get my course, The Essential Topology Guide, with a 20% discount using the code BIG20 through Gumroad. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in a few days with another video.